So, just when you thought Cyberpunk couldn't get any worse, it gets hit by ransomware. And what's worse, the attackers steal the source code for a lot of games. We're going to take a deep dive, go through this in detail, show you the actual ransomware sample, what it does on a task system, and what would happen if you were to get it, and some key takeaways and lessons from this incident, especially given the threat group behind it, Hello Kitty, funnily enough, had samples that were seen on Vars Total long before these articles were published. This is Leo, and you're watching the PC Security Channel. This video is brought to you by F-Secure. Check them out using the link in the description. Based on the official statement, the attackers encrypted some computers and stole data. The company said they would not pay the ransom and they would restore the system, so at least uh, that's good news. But the problem is, unlike a typical ransomware attack where it's all about the encryption and the ransom payment here, it seems the attackers stole source code for not just Cyberpunk, but also Witcher games. And some of you may be familiar with these games, they're quite popular. And if you go through the ransom note, which we will in a second, let's just bring it up. As you can see, it says, you have been epically pwned. We've dumped full copies of the source code from your server for Cyberpunk, Witcher 3, and other such games. We have also dumped all of your documents relating to accounting, administration, legal, HR, investor relations, and more. And it seems over here, the attackers are kind of aware that they can recover from backups. Your public image will go down the shitter and even more people will see how your shitty company functions. Well, that's what I think they wrote. As is customary and legally required, all ransom notes are written in broken grammar that's very difficult to read. Investors will lose trust in your company and your stock will dive even lower. You have 48 hours to contact us. Well, <laughs> as if, you know, if they contacted at 49 hours, the ransomware authors are going to be like, no, we don't want the money. But now let's uh, take a look at the actual sample, which is uh, what a lot of you are probably here for. We'll run it on this test VM and see what it does. Before that, we'll go through some of the key indicators. So in Vars Total, it's now detected by 61 engines. Identify it as Hello Kitty. That's a cute name for ransomware. If we take a look at the indicators, we've got um, two serious indicators, one being the Vars Total and the other one um, being a blacklisted library. So let's see what that is. MPR DLL. This is very common in ransomware and something I found as well during my own research. Although it's so widespread, it's hard to really use this as a detection parameter. If we go into imports, uh, again, a lot of suspicious imports here, but um, that alone is uh, not usually enough to make a decision. But then if we go into the actual strings, that's where you will see that this ransomware is not the best obfuscated. So it's not impossible to tell what this is. Right off the bat, we see an onion domain. That's pretty much a dead giveaway if you had any doubts. And if we scroll all the way down, we're gonna see the ransom note text and uh, all the other stuff. So we've got ransom note questions how do i get the special key uh, tor browser instructions and then it's interesting we've got a uh, ping to 127.0.0.1 this is obviously the loopback address which means uh, just refers to the host system that the command is executing on and then we get a hint of the ransom extension as well which is dot crypted so as you can see, um, it's not exactly very well hidden. Even if you put this through something like PStudio, the strings would give away pretty much everything about the ransomware. Kind of suggests that their focus here was not on stealth, at least not on the ransomware sample itself. It's possible they had a backdoor that was first installed on these systems and that had more of a stealth function and then the ransomware payload just did the encryption. And now we will see exactly that. So we've got the Hello Kitty sample right over here. We're going to go ahead and execute it and we'll see what happens. Let's pray for this test system. <laughs> so funnily enough, it does show you this command prompt window. Again, not an indicator of stealth. As you can see, it's uh, doing stuff. It's waiting for threads. And there's the loopback address, and then it deletes itself. Very quick operation. So let's see what the readme says now. 
It says, hello, dear user, your files are encrypted. What does it mean? Content of your files have been modified without special key. You can't undo this operation. And there's a more generic message because this is, of course, a more generic sample, not the specific one that was used on Cyberpunk servers, but it's essentially the same ransomware. Now let's take a look at uh, the documents. As you can see, everything is encrypted and there's really you know, no way to open these. Um, it's not like a simple rename or anything of that sort. We can try to see what it looks like. But as you can see, this is encrypted beyond oblivion. If we take a look at our pictures, same story, everything's encrypted and it puts the same readme in every folder, but it doesn't really do anything else. Doesn't change the background, doesn't um, show up any flashy messages. So that's Hello Kitty for you. Now we're going to go to Vars Total and take another look at the sample. So as you can see, um, some of the sandbox analysis also indicates that this is malware, but if we open up the graph, now this is the interesting part, so there are 40 files dropped by this uh, root node, and it's got a lot of similar files as well. It's also got a compressed parent, so quite a lot is known about this uh, you know, sample in particular. Now, if we go back and we look at behavior, again, it doesn't seem to really care if it's being executed in a sandbox. As you can see, it's still trying to execute there. In terms of submissions, this was first seen during November of 2020. And that's a really important point because in a lot of cases, these attacks happen after the sample is seen on Vars Total. So a better integration of Vars Total and threat research with your company could definitely help you. Either there's a threat group that's targeting a lot of different companies or the ransomware sample is just a modification of some previous sample. Because let's face it, cyber criminals aren't necessarily highly sophisticated and organized, and sometimes they're just recycling code, one campaign using the code of another. Of course, that's not always true, but in many cases, it is possible that the ransomware sample that you will be hit by will probably be seen on Vars Total first. Of course, if they have a backdoor into an important part of your systems, it kind of negates whatever defenses you're using. So a layered prevention approach, which is what I recommend, is definitely quite useful. If you're just a home user, another important lesson to learn is, uh, yeah, make sure you do your backups and you do them right. That's one of the main reasons that uh, Cyberpunk was not forced to pay the ransom in this case. Time for our sponsors. F-Secure is a leading cybersecurity provider from Finland and their top of line home product F-Secure Safe is available for you to try today. Now, of course, I've been running this on this test system for a few days now. And the couple of things I really like about it is the simplicity of the UI and how light it is on the system. This is a dual engine product. And to make it interesting, since they kindly decided to sponsor this video, we can test it against the ransomware that we just looked at. So we're gonna try to copy and paste Hello Kitty onto this test system being protected by F-Secure and we'll see if we're able to execute it. As you can see, the moment we rename it to exe, it is detected and removed by the virus protection module. But of course, they don't just have signatures, they also have a behavior blocker, which is called DeepGuard. This also integrates with their cloud, so we're going to test that out individually as well. So we'll turn off the virus protection, and we'll redo the same experiment. So we'll copy and paste the file again, rename to exe, and now we'll try and execute. As you can see, once again, it is blocked. This time it's blocked by DeepGuard, which is the behavioral monitoring solution. And as you can see, it says, this is a suspicious file. F-Secure Safe also comes with ransomware protection and its own protected folders feature, as well as exhaustive parental control options if you're into that. So give them a try. Show them some love for sponsoring the PC Security channel. And I hope you enjoyed watching that little demo. Now, if you would like to test your systems and find out how susceptible they are to a ransomware attack like the one we mentioned, feel free to contact us at thepcsecuritychannel.com. We do a lot of security testing for businesses and enterprise. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.